You guys know I'm used to this, all them damn shows. Yeah, that is true. You know what? Yeah, you good? Yeah. Because you're just sitting there. Is this yours? Yeah. Your line? You can move it. No, it ain't my line. I haven't started that yet. How are you? I don't know. I feel like everybody's doing makeup. Everybody's doing everything. I might just do a little, like, I don't know, hoops fit line or something. You know, like athletic wear, leisure wear or something. I'm you haven't even started that. I know. I know. Dude, there's so many things, but it's just like, I love my freedom now. I've been in this for so long. So I love to, I mean, I'm still making money, you know what I mean? But, like, that is a whole other, st I don't know. I, you have to have a proper team for it and everything, and I'm just, like, enjoying my life. It takes a lot. Oh, that's all right. It takes a whole lot. When I saw this spot, I said, yeah, she, she, she. <laughs> <laughs> Mic check, mic check, mic check, mic check, mic check. Mic check. One two, one two. My name's Nick. Nice. You know what I do. Come on. Mm. Oh, we about to kick the freestyle <laughs> you know now. Gonna. <laughs> <laughs> but nah, I mean, I don't know. Thanks. Oh, you're welcome. I'm glad you guys are here. Yeah, yeah. It was just a little short, little dry. That's all. Yeah, just ten hours. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's why I'm like, where are you guys going next? I mean, dang, you might as well get a big old camper and just tour and just go grab people on the way. You know what? Oh, I just gave you an idea. I want 10%. Okay. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. No, no. I tell you what. If you could you help us line up for these interviews, you oh, get 10%. See? 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 So, oh, yeah, no, yeah. Well, this could be work. This could, this could work. You, could, you know way more people than I do. <laughs> <laughs> Just let them know we come and you connect it up, you get your 10%. Oh, okay. And depending on who it is, I raise the 15%. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Shit, I'm a businessman. <laughs> but how you been? I've been wonderful. Cannot complain. Great. great. <laughs> how you, you, so how you been? <laughs> <laughs> great, great. Well, oh, my gosh. I got asked, though, so when did I pop up for you guys where you were like, we got to get her? I've been following you. you know I mean? Of course. Been following you forever, but you know what? I really don't know. Mm -hmm. You just kind of, you scroll on your Instagram, you just kind of <laughs> come across. Uh -huh. You're like, it'd be dope to get an interview with Hoops. <laughs> Let me reach out and see, and just see. Just see what happens. I mean, the interviews see? you don't get are the ones you don't ask for. Yeah, it's the truth. So, yeah, I and just here we are. Swine the bat, and 10 hours later, and in the sticks and mountains <laughs> yeah. later, here we are. Oh, you'll miss it. You'll be like, dang, that was a beautiful place. <laughs> It'll, it grows Not, on you. The peace of quiet. Mm hmm. Yep. But sometimes it can get a little loud around here sometimes, too. Really? How? Us. Besides, y'all. <laughs> I thought you were about to say the bears or something. Uh, no, we have a couple bears. They're right up there. Okay. You may yeah. see them, too. Ain't we supposed to get this out there at the beginning? Yeah, no, no, they keeps coming. I mean, you'll see. Adam, you just let us know. If one comes around the corner, we'll be sure to capture it on film. I got out of running. So is this the every man for himself type of thing? No, you just have to just n not panic. Not panic. There's a big ass bear right there, but <laughs> yeah, you don't want me to panic. Yeah, you could just, you know, you just move ever so slowly. Oh, we had a really big one, though, the other day, right where that car was. And Ray, he's a hound dog or whatever. He chases them off. He has a different bark for each animal, whether it's a snake, a bear, a coyote, or whatever it is. Big, the biggest black bear I've ever seen looking like a brown bear, a grizzly. Like, he was humongous, went after Ray. Ray backed up real quick, and then, yeah, I mean, he just, I've never seen him be that aggressive, but other than that, they're just chill. Other than that. Yeah, other than that, I mean, they're chill. <laughs> <laughs> other than that, you know, they don't, they don't mess with you, come and eat the garden or something like that, just walk right by you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> I need the camera to get you guys. <laughs> That's the interview. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, but I mean, what y'all got in Louisiana? Uh, just gators, right? Yeah, gators and maybe a couple of snakes. Uh, yeah, some got the crawfish. 
What y'all good eating? Yeah, some crawfish. Other than that, <laughs> you gonna say some crawfish? <laughs> other than that, not much. Not as everything y'all got here. Mm -hmm. You know. <laughs> good. So what you got going on now? What you getting, you know? What you getting your hands into? Well, really, a bunch of content right now. I'm gonna start a series called Hanging with Hoops. Yeah. And yep. Okay. And so it's kind of like what you guys do or whatever, but I'll be bringing my friends into my environment and whether it's cooking or hair or I mean, with me, as y'all know, if you follow me at any given time, you can get any given thing. So taking my friends out of their element, fish out of water and bringing them here, doing hikes or whatever it might be, you know, and also talking to them about like their world, but bring them and let them come here, which is hilarious. Anyway, you never know. We might go on a ghost hunt. We might go fishing. We might go wherever. But I, yeah, I'm gonna start, start the little series. So diving off rocks. Yeah, cliff jumping. You know, into quarries. Yeah, you you seen that video? Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, I've seen it. <laughs> yeah. So besides that, I'm actually, um, rehearsing right now uh, for First Lady Three. We got greenlit, so we will be filming in January. Congrats. Yeah. So one and two is out on Amazon Prime right now and to be a couple other platforms. So, yeah, we're moving on with the franchise. Congratulations. Thank you. Looking forward to it. We'll yep. be checking it out. Yep. I'll be killing a whole lot more people. <laughs> That's good. That's good. We and, might have and, to. And making moves. We might have to make a guest appearance, you know, be like an extra or something. You know what I mean? But anyway, let's go back to the beginning. All so right. you was born in Michigan, right? I was. A little town called Brownstown, Michigan. Okay. Very rural, actually, like this, without the mountains. So this is where you get it from. Yeah, it's kind of in the roots. We grew okay. up on a dirt road and dead end and woods in the back and rope swinging into creeks and ponds. and it's, So this is kind of home. Yep, catching turtles and frogs. Catching <laughs> turtles and frogs. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, I used to bring an animal home about every other day trying to sneak it in the house. Yep, and I loved Donatello from the Ninja Turtles, so like, they were all named Donatello. Yeah. Good yeah. luck. But the one, the last one I brought home, fell into the, uh, what is it where the air blows out? What is it? You know, the vent, the vent. Uh huh. It was in the floor, and oh, he uh, got crisped all up. And so that happened. I didn't bring another turtle in the house. <laughs> Look at you guys' face! <laughs> Please! <laughs> <laughs> Literally, he got he got loose and he fell in the he fell in the vent and died because the heat was on. Peter finna come after you. <laughs> <laughs> what was the smell like? No, there wasn't any. Oh, really? No. So I don't know how long he whatever. So we just know. kept business as usual, huh? Yeah, just kept in, on just going kept moving. Yeah, I grabbed him out. He was all like, "It is all right." So most of your childhood, you just would see it. Just wild, a wild child. And, yeah, literally. So and not much has changed. <laughs> <laughs> Besides here and there where I have to slip on my red bottoms, you know. Okay. Red bottoms. Yeah. Oh, dookie. But, yep, so Brownstown, Michigan, born and raised. So you was a Fab Five fan? Um, Uh-oh. <laughs> yeah, now you're going to kill me. <laughs> kind of, but, you know. So, so you must have been Michigan State. No, 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 I was a Fab Five. I just never really... Once again, it's just in my blood as a rebel. My family obviously loved U of M, mm -hmm. and because they did, and it was all U of M, I never, I just went the other way. I don't know why I'm that way, but it was never Michigan State mm -hmm. or any of those. I just, I don't know. I love basketball either way, but I was too busy playing it to watch it, especially growing up. So let's get into your basketball playing day. Yeah. So when did you start? Oh, that is... I guess when I could hold the ball, I was just a baby. And then um, got strong enough to granny, sh you know, the granny shot. Did you all ever do that? When yeah. Start off with that or whatever. We had a basketball hoop outside. And, I mean, I just loved basketball, like, literally, even still to this day. So, I mean, I never really stopped playing. Now we do celebrity basketball games and stuff like that. But I thought my entire life was going to revolve around balling. Like, that was just it. I lived, breathed, slept it. Michael Jordan was my man. Like, he was – everything to me him and then it was Allen Iverson loved him to death so patterned my game after them and then um but it never really worked out in school it was just like you know your your life my life kind of just went on another path I ended up playing overseas in Italy for okay. two years and then from there went to LA and then a whole nother life happened 
So you played all the way through high school, right? Yeah, I played through high school, did a JUCO for two years, but our coach quit, so that never happened. Right. It was just like, oh, I got in a bad accident, and then I had broke my ankle. It was oh, always man. one thing after the other. So I'm like, all right. But, yep. Yeah. So you wanted to go WNBA, but it just didn't turn out that way. No, you know, I really? didn't. No, I don't. I mean, I got offers, but this was after the first show. Like, I had the craziest offers come through. Uh huh. But, like, back then, WNBA had just started. It wasn't really big. You know what I mean? But, like, even so, as a, I was such a tomboy, I loved the guy sports. I only played with the guys. Like, girls I thought were too soft. And I always had to drop my level of playing, especially in the school and the schools we grew up in. So, yeah, but. I don't know. Then I just got thrown in the entertainment business, and here I am. How many dudes got mad because you probably beat them one-on-one? -on -one? Dude, they are some of the <laughs> biggest babies, though. Like, literally. Yeah. Oh, you fouled me, you blah, 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 blah. Like, the worst. Especially street ball. Street ball. And they'd be the worst ones when they got change in their pocket. You, they think they know everything. Like, take the change out of your pocket and play ball. All dangling and jangling, running around, and oh, my gosh. But yeah, <laughs> you like man, this ain't no good. You better take that change out your pocket. Man, you all better, the not you better noise get and nonsense. But yeah, so that was it. Cause then you do like some TSA stuff before you did the entertainment. I part. did. I that was my only real job I ever had. Yeah, <laughs> I always kind of knew at a young age I was never gonna sit behind a desk or really take orders from anybody else. But my aunt was like the head of TC TSA in mm -hmm. Detroit. And she was like, Nikki, come on, we're having training, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, oh, my gosh. But did it in past, and I worked there for a couple years or so, and then that was about it. Couldn't do it. Just never showed up after that. <laughs> I'm like, I can't do this. I can't. Yeah. I've always been, I've always had more of a hustle mentality. Like, there's so much you can get if you're moving or, you know what I mean, just like, I mean, how I sold candy out of my locker in school and, you know, who didn't do that just for some extra change. Oh, but, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like. It's in your blood. It's in your blood. Kind of never leaves. Right. Yeah. And then flavor of love happened. Then I guess that's your your interest into the entertainment business. It was. So t how did that all come about? How you know did you did you get a phone call or a friend suggest? I mean, how did it, how did that all transpire? So when I was in Italy, and uh, we went and traveled to LA, stayed there for the summer, and one of my friends had an agency that he was with and we went and visited he needed to pick up some paperwork tell her whatever and um she seen me and was just like do you like model or anything and i'm like no i mean it kind of comes with just you know the territory or whatever like hey do this hair book blah blah blah, blah whatever mm -hmm. but i was just like not really so she goes take her over to this building and at that time it was the biggest production company literally in the business starting off with reality television i didn't have a clue so we went over there. She's like, hurry, they're getting ready to close. And I'm like, where are we going? He goes, i got to take you over there. She said, take you over there. I remember riding in the car, and we literally were just around the block. We walk in, and they handed me this clipboard. I was the only one. There was nobody else I saw. And there was just me, and they're like, okay, just fill this clipboard out. Craziest questions you'd ever think. Are you single? Where's the craziest place you've had sex? Like, I'm thinking, like, in my mind, can I answer these questions? You know what I mean? Like, I'm getting... <laughs> Right. I'm like, wait, what? Like, what y'all got me doing? Yeah, it was yeah. so crazy. So then, after I filled that out, took me behind the scenes and interview set up or whatever. And she goes, okay, so we're kind of going to ask you those questions now in person. And I'm, I'm, I'm just like, she's just like, and you can look at me. And that was my very, very, very first interview of, like, not even knowing, like, everything was going to change. So, three weeks later, I'm back in Michigan, get a call. And they were like, hey, um... We, you know, we, we picked you for the show we're getting ready to do. We can't disclose any information, but, you know, would you be available for about three to four weeks in Sino, L.A.? And I'm like, well, let me think about it. She goes, okay, well, in the meantime, we're going to send you this contract. Hella thick. Like, I remember getting in the mail and everything. I'm like, what am I? And I, back then, you're young. I'm just like, oh, sign it away. Oh, I just made the millions not knowing. So, literally, I said yes, left, went to Encino, and we... There were these, man, it was crazy operation. I mean, there's at least 120 production crew, people, and everywhere just running around. They had never seen another female. Nobody. This is how sequestered they had us. Still don't know nothing. All we know is it's a dating show. That's it. We just know it's a dating show. So you think you about to just get hooked up with a guy, y'all go on a date, they film it? No, you know? it wasn't even like that. They just okay. want to know if everybody was single. So we didn't, we didn't have a clue. It was just going to be, that was what the basis of the questions were. Like, 
right. you know, whatever. So I'm like, okay, well, it has something to do with love or dating or whatever, you know, maybe a competition. We don't know. So they're like, okay, here's your, uh, your, you know, we had to get, I don't know, they gave us all these credentials, blah, 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 and then boom, we're in the house. Next thing I know, they have this rack of dresses that comes out, and this is how fast it's moving. I'm literally like, what is going on? And we are in the house, and this is a very opening scene that you guys saw. And I remember these gigantic cranes, like crazy camera equipment that are just like looking everywhere. And then all the other girls come out. And I'm like, oh, there's like 19 other women here. I'm like, what the? And we're all looking at each other like we didn't have a clue. That's how real. So, I mean, off camera, me and Flav, we're super cool or whatever. But like he told me, we were sitting there and he was just like, your life is about to change. And I'm like, what are you talking about? Like, I didn't understand what he was saying and what, how he meant it, you know. Yeah. And he just goes... No, they're going to love you. Like, everything about your life is going to change after this. And I never knew what he meant until once I won. And then, you guys know, it was history from there. Right. But even even going back before you even won, like, on set, do the directors or producers go to certain girls and be like, okay, I need you to be a little bit more catty, or I need you to call her an asshole. You know what I'm saying? 1,000%, they do. Right. So that's the thing. With reality, like that were influenced, you can be. So that brings out more of whatever kind of real character that you have. So, but a lot of times for like uh, action purposes and reactions, which is really it. Right. If we're all three in a scene or something and they know that I'm secretly dating you or however, whatever, and but me and you were on a date, production then went to him like, hey, I need you to walk in because she's like on this date with this other guy, blah, 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 blah. And then you're like, you're either good with it and you're going to like, get that camera time, you know what I'm saying? And be like, oh, hell no. You know what I mean? And enhance who, how you feel. But here he comes walking in. Now, the element of surprise is coming on me and you. We're like, oh, that's the real deal. You right. see what I'm saying? Not everybody knows. They're going to tell me, hey, you're going to go have lunch today with, you know, Jeff, whatever. Uh -huh. I know that much. That's it. But you don't know this other guy's going to come in and I don't know stuff. that, like, my ex might pop up or this, that, and the other, whatever, because they want to get my reaction. The natural reaction, yeah, and real that, time. That's what you get. Yeah, you're like, oh. But then, like, so when you get pissed off at somebody or a fight happens, oh, yeah, that's real. All the fights, the drama in the show, very much real. But you, you we're not knowing that they kind of triggered all of that. You know what I'm saying? They egged it on by giving you a little bit of information by saying the production company came to you like, hey. She was just in the room talking shit about you, which you're going to do. You know what I'm saying? And this is what she said. You should go confront her about it. Now, here she comes walking in the room like, oh, I know you're talking. Yeah, that's how that happens. That's how they can get reactions. Oh, damn. Got me a little insight. I'm like, man, some of these people can't be that crazy. Oh, yeah, they're crazy. They just, they just get more <laughs> just crazy. More, they just get crazy. Yeah, they enhance yeah. who they are. It just enhances who they are. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, you yeah. know, I always feel like that you... It seemed like you were just always the same the whole series, mm -hmm. that you didn't embellish or anything yeah. like that. I just feel like you were just being you. Totally. So, And that was just the thing, and I think that that's why it took over so well. People can tell, listen, but if you're an asshole and you're truly an asshole, people accept you for that. You just have to be whoever you are. You know what I'm saying? You could, I mean, vil people like villains too, but it's just with New York is why we... She flipped so fast. Like, Segway. You're, you're, I was about to ask about her, you're too. You're literally like, she was not that way. We were cool. Mm -hmm. And then, but she knew what to do to start pulling on strings. And she was her puppet like, oh, yeah, okay, I'll get everybody going. And then for me, once I just seen how fake you were just being, to me, that's fake. You know, back then we're young. You don't understand that. I, yeah, I want to actually hurt you right now. You know what I'm saying? Keep on talking crazy. Like, you don't. I don't even play that. <laughs> you know what I mean? And so <laughs> that's when it came out like, uh -huh, you better. Yeah, because I could get a little. Bit. It right. takes a lot to get me there. I don't sound like fake shit or anybody. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I understand. So, but, and I was also young and hot headed, but I, you know, was still who I was too. So when New York first got on the scene, you know, when the first, when the show first started, she was actually mellow, cool. Yeah, she was cool. We got right. along in the same room, but then. It was right towards the end when eliminations got hot and heavy that she just turned it on, flipped it. I'm talking about one second. We're all in the room. She leaves the room, came back in, complete flip. And that's when I was like, you got to be kidding me. Like, ho wait, who just walked back in? And from there, that was it. Me, Pumpkin, Goldie, all of us were like, oh, nah. 
we were tripping out, but yeah. But she she did a good job making enemies out of everybody. Do you think the director's kind of here? Or, did, or you think she figured out, like, you know what? I could become a star by being the biggest villain. And yeah, that worked for her. I mean, you know what I mean? Like, so, and she took it. good. Yeah, and she took <laughs> it and ran with it, and she's still running with it. I mean, that's just, you know, she's an icon for it. We all are in different ways, you know? Uh -huh. But, yeah, it works for her, so. But she's she's a sweet girl. Right. She's just crazy as hell. Right. So, you end up winning. Yep. And so, what, what happened from the point? That from the point that they said, like, uh, not they, but that you that you won from that point. Well, you know, they had to go through editing. And so it wasn't but months later that it started to air. And I think it was only the second episode. And I was rarely on there. But my don't even ask me how, because I'm like I said, I'm not even internalizing what's going on. You know, I just went and did a crazy ass show. I come back home. That's just it. I go back to whatever I'm doing, you know, and balling, whatever. But my phone starts blowing up. So, I mean, obviously they had the information to call your phone, whatever. But, like, back then, mm -hmm. if people wanted you, they got a hold of uh, the publicist through the company for the, for the production company. And they would give the information. And that was just it. It was on the telephone, you know. So I had booking agents, regular agents. I had publicists. I had... Oh, I mean, you name it, offers all this crazy stuff. And I'm just like, what in the world? But then there was one guy, his name was Van Silk. And he called me and he was just like, hey, like, I have all these girls or whatever. And let me manage you. Like, you make a hell of a lot of money traveling and doing appearances and blah, blah, blah. Like the world wants to see you. And I'm just like, what? I was just like, OK, let me see what you're talking about. But man, I was booked for covers. Y'all know. I mean, I had I was on covers damn near almost every week of my life, you know, right after that, like, it was crazy from Wild and Out to, you know, uh, uh, Park, what was, it, what was it? 106, 106 Park, Park. Uh, yeah. to, you know, Big Tigger, to, man, Double XL, The Source, uh, Sister to Sister, you name it. I mean, it was just like the door, the world, everything open. But I never, I never went that way. You know what I mean? Like, I always just stayed in my own lane. But like, when I seen like how everything opened up and like the way they took me in besides the haters and all this other crap you know what i mean you're gonna get that especially when you have so much fame i had to get thick skin very quick but it was very crazy radio stations like you talk about interviews i had to talk about this every damn day every <laughs> day. every every, and you're still talking every, about it today. every day and this is what's crazy i'm still talking about it today what do you think of that you won you was flavor flays Winner, girl, I guess. I, I don't know what you want to call it. <laughs> but, but, no. but, I mean, girl, I, I don't want to say that you was a girl and, and, it, and it wasn't that. But, but we already know what I'm talking about. But anyway, it got to the reunion show and then it broke off. Well, that, yeah, because at the time, season two was already running. So, Oh, literally. so if you already got a girl, you can't do a season two if you already exactly. couple. So I had to be the bad guy then. Lala was like, okay, this is how it's going to go. You know, Lala was uh, doing VH1 then. You know? Oh, yeah, that's yeah, right. Yeah, so that's Lala right. was there, whatever. We had the reunion show. And uh, that's how it went down or whatever. I was like, yeah, no, I mean, we're, uh, we decided to uh, not be together. We had never – we went to a show. It was right afterwards because he was on tour. Mm -hmm. So cool. We were in UK. Oh, my gosh, it was awesome. But, I mean, that was it. There was no communication. Cool as hell. Like, I love him to death. You know what I mean? Right, like, right, right. If right. we want to do something or however, whatever, he'd be right there. Like, we've been to comedy shows and stuff like that. Nothing but love for that guy. For real. He's awesome. Damn, so you had to be the villain. I was the villain. I was the villain. So, yeah, that's all right. You get any negative feedback for that, for having to be the, yeah, the you bad know, guy? I think me and Delicious got into it because, you see, season two, season three, they all knew who they were going for. We didn't have a clue. So they, they auditioned and went for Flav. Right. That's the difference. And all the whole misconception is, is that we knew that it was him. And we're, you think I'm about to audition? Or any of us, really, you know, in the right mind, unless you just want to be on TV, for mm. Flav? <laughs> I mean, I love him to death, but come on. So Delicious was like, that's not how we do it out in Detroit. Like, blah, blah, blah. I'm thinking, like, you do not want none. <laughs> oh, motherfucking start with my name and your and anyway we had our words or whatever but she's a sweetheart lover to death you know that that just comes with the territory or whatever but so many people because you mentioned the name hoops you was either getting a radio state the getting a deal or or you had mass media font yo it was crazy how did you deal with that i know once it's, you was on the hard. show 
you won. Everybody knows your name. Everybody knows who. Oh, it, it was crazy from guys in the business saying that they were with me or couldn't get with me, so they put me in a song. Kanye West and the game did one. I'm just thinking, like, you mother. Yeah, like, you know what I mean? So, right. anyway. Let's shoot it. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, those were those crazy days, man. But yeah. Uh, yeah, you couldn't stop it all. And I can't sit there and defend myself with whatever. So at that point, you just are like, whatever. That's when the, the people closest to you are, become most important because you don't want to hear that. You already got to deal with the world. So the people around you, I'm not trying to hear that from y'all. So they know, you go, you, anybody next to me got to know, don't bring that around me because I have to deal with it in the world. Mm -hmm. Don't do that. Like, this is supposed to be my safe place. You know what I'm saying? So don't be talking about they even came out with a new article or this is the gossip from her Sunday or that. Dumb bitch Wendy Williams is talking about you. I wish I could get to her <laughs> now. Still. Anyway. <laughs> Y'all don't get me going. <laughs> I love the oh keep it rolling. <laughs> but yeah, okay, you got through with the flavor love, you did that. Then I love money comes across. Woo! Yeah. Now tell me about that. Well, um, so after Flavor of Love, they actually offered me another show. They wanted me to do what New York did. But I turned it down, so New York got all the 20 guys or whatever. So it would have been like, I love hoops, whatever, da 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 What made you turn it down? I guess I knew what went into it, and it wasn't real to me. Like, so right, you know okay, I mean? okay. Like, love is real, like, it should be real, like, it's not a game, you know what I mean? I'm not about to go play with somebody and for money or a, a television show. It's just not who I am. So I turned it down, right. and I was just like, I'll do a show if you guys can find something with some damn substance in it, something fun, whatever, but back then... The drama, they, they wanted the drama, they wanted the crazy factors, and I'm just not that character. I'm not a character, so um, she got it. So then the production company calls me again, and this is Chris Abrego, freaking love him to death, head of the production company. He's like, yo, Nick, and I'll never forget because I was in Kentucky. And he goes, hey, we got another show, and I know you're going to love it. And I'm like, what is it, Chris? And he goes, uh, well, it's going to be like a competition with all of the best people, like the the number one runners, like fan favorites, blah, blah, blah. And obviously you're number one, so we need you on the show. And I'm like, what are we doing? He, he goes, it's like kind of a competition show, but it's going to be a cash prize. And I'm like, okay. I'm like, I don't know, man. You got to let me think about it. He goes, well, think about this. He goes, it's going to be dangerous and adventurous. And I was like, oh, okay, I'll do it. I knew it. <laughs> <laughs> he was like, I knew you would. We'd be trapped in Watuco, Mexico for three and a half weeks. But I go... I, now I know by now that when they're doing shows, they're already ready for spinoffs and everything before they even film it. You got to have a, you know, an end game in mind. So I go, who's the winner? Who's winning? Chris was like, white boy. And I'm like, so you're telling me right now, literally, this is, this is how I'm going into it. You're telling me right now. He goes, well, listen, everybody wants to see you guys or whatever. It's still going to be fun. And you're the biggest name. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Just come on and just. And I said, and know that I'm not going to win? Like, you know me, y'all. I don't like to lose for nothing. I mostly have never lost. Anyway. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but so, go. you know what it did for my pride and ego to know they had a winner? But I said, well, you know what? The adventure will be fun. Uh, meet more people or whatever. Da, da, da. I was like, fuck it. I'll just, let's just do it. I told him, yeah. So the next thing I know, here we are on these boats through Huatuco, Mexico. Hi, baby. Hi. And um, they took people from I Love New York, um, you know, all the love, all the love people mm -hmm. together, the Rock of Love or whatever. And that's when I met Real Chance and White Boy or whatever. So, I mean, okay. we clicked immediately. So, you know, we got to the mansion or whatever, and we still kind of don't know what's going on. And at that point, as soon as we got there, the competition started for the captains. And the very first two captains that I obviously win it, I ended up winning the first challenge. So I became a captain, and then the next person that won the challenge was White Boy. Because we said we were going to be on a team, but that put us on opposite teams. Change the dynamic now. Complete change. But in my mind, I know he's supposed to, like, win this thing. You know what I mean? So I'm in my whole, the whole time I'm on this show, I'm like, how are they going to do this, you know? But anyway, so I killed the competitions, blah, 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 blah. But anyway, I'm the gold team. He's the green team. And after that, you pick, just like, the, like if you're hooping. Right. Yeah, you pick your squad. And then from there, you just compete or whatever until... That one fateful competition that led and, and every, all the alliances switched and changed. And that, that it, it was by far my favorite, the favorite show I've ever done. Loved that. I love that show. And me and Real became very close and chance and, you know, 
it was cool. Very cool time. Wow. So it went from him winning to you winning. Yeah. So, um, you know, the whole time in my mind, I'm trying to think, like, how is he going to get the lead, this and the other. But right. it was just very ironic that, like, we both ended up captains to begin with. Well, once it got down towards the end, it was just me and White Boy left. How crazy is that? Mm. All right. So we called them legs of races, Le legs of the race. So, like, you, you had, like, you know, one leg part. Once you got past that part, you had to go to the second leg of the race and the third. And there was four or five for this last competition that we had to do, me and White Boy facing off. So I remember before we started that day, it was just so trippy. And we were in the room talking and just like, how crazy is this how everything happened? Me and you were going to be together, you know, like right. alliances, blah, 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 but ended up separated. But now everybody's gone and it's just me and you. But in my mind that day, I started talking about, Man, let's just recap on like how the order of the everybody went home. You know, first it was we, we, we went down the line. He couldn't really remember. So we eat and we get ready and we just wish each other luck. And he's like, you know, if I win, you win. And I said, vice versa, white boy. I'm just glad one of us will take it back, right? Right. So holy crap, they put us in the ride and then they drop us off at in Huachuco, Mexico. There's just this little town square type of deal. But what I didn't know is that that whole town square was placed with production people. So the first leg of the race, once they blew that horn, was you have to collect 100 pesos to get in the taxi to go to the second leg of the race. So if you have to sell your clothes, if you have to do whatever, you need to go and beg these people for 100 pesos. Interesting. So I said, oh, boom, we go. So we're going up to these people, but everybody I asked is like, ah, sorry, I'm not going to give it to you, blah, blah, blah. And in my mind, I'm like, oh, this is how it happens. This is how he gets the lead. Because now, mind you, we're timed. We're timed, like how fast you do this or whatever. So he gets his 100 pesos, 50 or 100, I can't remember. He's like three minutes ahead of me now before I finally, I got rid of my soul, my belly ring. I'm like, here, give me the damn money. Like, I'm taking my jewelry out. Give me the 100 pesos, whatever. So I got it. And if you remember, um... We got jumped in the taxis or whatever, and then so at the second leg of the race, the way it's set up is for camera purposes, you still start, you see them. You won't start until, like, you're both there so they can capture it all. So he goes for the second leg, and you just run through these woods, and you're going down this crazy-ass, like, winding path that opened up into these sand dunes, and the ocean was right there. Anyway, three minutes go by. I have to wait until I can even go. So, boom. So they're like, you know, three, two, one or whatever. Okay, good. go hoops. Man, I ran so damn fast and I got to them sand dunes. But then they had these gigantic coins. So it was just one thing after the other, but I made up like a minute and a half. Roll the coins and you jump on the boat. And then the boat took us over to the third leg, which was you had to swim through the ocean and swim up the freaking to shore. I'm like, oh my gosh. But I made up another minute. Now we get to the staircase. And I'm thinking like, God, once I get up the staircase, that's it. You know, he won. Go up the staircase. No, before we do that, you know, we're right there. And he just hugged me. He's like, man, this has been so fun. I'm about to get that 250. I'm going to take you shopping when you come to Miami. And I'm like, all right, white boy, cool. He leaves. He goes up the stairs, comes around the corner, whatever. And then I had like a minute and 30 to wait. Boom. I take up off the stairs. I get around there. And I'm just waiting for them to be like, you know, he's holding up the check or whatever. And they're like, hoops, it's not over with. You got a whole nother leg of the race. You got to put these characters in order from which they were eliminated. I was like, oh, shit. Now, remember, I was just talking about this the day before. Right. I went over there and whoop, 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 move on, whoop, 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 boom. They fucking voided his check, and I was the winner. Damn. You guys, when I tell you it was just like that, and White Boy was over there like, what the fuck just happened? Like, oh, my gosh. Like, And I'm like, what? Are you kidding me? you seen the producers and Chris and Bregan and them over there crying. They're like, oh, fuck. There's our fucking spit off. <laughs> we can't even, how the fuck does she keep doing this? How the fuck do you can't? And there's nothing they can do about it. Like, redo it and then, like, let, you know what I mean? Like, by in this case, that's happen. just it. Yeah. They, at the wow. rap party, they just were like, no matter what it is, you fucking, you keep winning this shit. Like, blah, blah, blah. And I was just like, well, <laughs> show me the money, motherfucker. <laughs> Oh my gosh, yeah, it was incredible. So then I went up to White Boy and I'm like, White Boy, I'll take you shopping. Mm. <laughs> Man, but we've been so cool ever since, you know. But that was my favorite show. A quarter of a million dollars. Dang. Yep. 
and you actually got a quarter of a million. Sure enough, did. Damn. Stupid, yeah. Yeah, yeah take on TV needs some sponsorship. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> just a little bit. Just a little bit. Wow. Yeah. They like, uh uh. Any competition reality show, she's out. No, yeah, that was it. I, I never got casted for another, uh, no, but you know, The Bachelor, uh, two of The Bachelors actually requested me on, like, the ABC Bachelor show. Oh, yeah? Yeah, he, he called me twice, like, the actual, I don't even know who still that it was, you know, I never watched all of that, but twice The Bachelors called and requested me to be, like, a cast member, and I remember telling the lady, <laughs> I'm like, I am, um... I'm a, I'm a black woman. I'm never going to win that show. I'm sorry. And she goes, yeah, you're probably right. And I'm like, fuck you, bitch. But <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because I had won everything, so I'm not going to go on there and then take a chance of, you know, you're in the world world, you yeah. know, whatever. Like, not about to be your guinea pig and go on there. You know what I'm saying? Right. Yeah. yeah. No. So I turned oh, it Oh, yeah. Hey, I got a winning streak going. You ain't finna ruin that. What you, yeah. What you talking about? I'll do Dancing with the Stars overseas, though. Yeah. I don't care to go that's lose right. over there. You yeah, know what that, I mean? That, that's what's up. Mike Tyson did it. I mean, that's he. that was like another quarter of a million. I mean, just for going. Right. Stupid. Yeah. Ooh. I mean, he was off in one dance, but I'll go overseas and get 250 one time. That's fine. Ooh. But yeah, so that's that. So, I mean, what, what do you think about reality shows today versus when you when you first started? Cause when you started, that's when they were first starting to, you know, to come on board. Yeah, it was real. Um, not that not that they're not real now. See, we were kind of the guinea pigs, but we did, you know, uh, we kind of are like the, what, what do you want to call it? We're the OGs of reality, for sure. Right. But you were filming 24 hours a day, seven days a week, cameras rolling. You know how much footage that is? To go? This is about to be a lot of footage just to go through. You know what I'm saying? But uh -huh. imagine hella people, you're, everybody's mic'd. You got cameras in corners that can pick up if you're whispering, however, whatever, and you better hope they do because if not, they're going to put words there anyway. Now... This like, hold on, we're not wasting all this money in editing, you know, all this time. So now it's semi-scripted, you know, mm -hmm. and so they'll prepare a day. And so like when I produced my third show, It Takes a Sister, that's how it was. It was more um, half scripted. So we knew what was going to happen during the days to get the shots done in, in an allotted amount of time that was convenient, not just taking forever. I mean, because back then you're on set for three, four weeks. That's hella footage that people got to go through and make a show. So a lot of the stuff that they get out of that, I mean, hell, there was so much that you guys never even saw that happened. You can't put that in there in, what, 52 minutes? Right. 48 minutes, whatever it is. Yeah. Right. So now I just think that, like, people got smarter, but now drama sells. So the crazier, the more extreme, the, more, the higher the ratings, which is stupid because I, America loves that craziness. But whatever. It is what it is. Right. But it's boring oh. to me now. Oh. You know, time passes by, then you turn to a boxer. Yeah. So tell me about how the celebrity uh, boxing match came for. I mean, came together, and then how Farrah Abraham even got involved in this. <laughs> well, um, I've always been active, and right. you know, whether it's basketball, extreme sports, whatever you want to call it, but I've always had a love for boxing, always. And um, who's your favorite boxer? Well, I love Floyd, of course. What? Yes, but he's <sighs> personal friends, so that's why. Okay, all right, you know what right, I mean. Right, like that's the same thing with a lot of football players. Whatever, you can't. I'm, I'm biased because like a lot of them are homies. But well, he hasn't lost the match, so I, mean, <laughs> I, I, I get it. <laughs> ja, um, actually, Jay Prince, whatever, used to train over at his gyms a lot. You know, right, so I got right. Roger Blowworth is a person he trained Mike Tyson or whatever. He and I do love Mike Tyson though as a boxer. That's like, my guy. I, pattern the way I box is just like him you know what I mean just I'm short compact yeah and I've seen that yeah so like <laughs> literally <laughs> um and so but I've only done it boxing just to like work out because like I love the workout that it gives you I mean you mm -hmm. just feel so you feel so good afterwards it's a good stress reliever anyway well there was this guy named Damon and um he does he's in the celebrity boxing world and for seven eight years he had been trying to get me to box all these women like these girls or whatever and uh the first one was octo mom y'all remember her i remember her yeah you trying to, he wanted you to box her i'm like no damon oh, i'm not geez. doing that then it was tila tequila you remember her mm -hmm. so it was all of these like pin up like whatever i'm like dude i'm not i'm yeah. not doing it and then it he these big old gloves you had to have it was just like yeah, a those, novelty yeah those things look kind of, they were, those things yeah, were kind of big. Well, they were even bigger 
They were bigger than the ones that the, the fights that he were putting on. They were even bigger than that. So I'm like, David, uh, I'm not doing that silly stuff or whatever. Like, do you know who I am? Like, I'm not getting the value. Anyway, then he came back with Octomom again. I'm like, bro. Anyway, he was on my butt. I mean, he just kept. You guys, he is the funniest person in the world. Let me tell you. Like, he came back. Like, oh, well, what about Octomom again? Like, no, nah, just because some years went by, I'm not gonna change my mind. Like, Octomom. Yeah, it literally. And so. Um, you know, he had had Donny, uh, Danny Bonaducci fight, like, uh, I, I forget the other guy's name or whatever. So so he finally comes to me. I was in Pittsburgh, and he was just like, oops, I'm right in Philly, man. I can catch the train. I got a good I got, I got, got a good opponent for you. And I'm like, Damon, I never even told you I was going to fight. Like, I keep telling you no, and you just keep on. He goes, let me just tell you, okay? Like, I'm going to come there because I, I, I know you're going to take it. And he goes, and I was like, no, tell me now. I don't want you wasting a trip, so I'm going to tell you no again. He goes, well, listen. Fair Abraham said that, that, you know, she's already signed with me. She's going to fight. And I'm like, who in the fuck, who is that? And he's like, from Teen Mom. She's like the most hated, boo, boo, boo. And I'm like, let me look her up, wah, wah, wah. Mm -hmm. Dude, hella followed because, like, she's just, people just want to tear her up or whatever. But, like, I didn't get into all, like, why people don't like her. I'm just like, maybe this is a good idea. Like, whatever. And so then I said, all right, I'll do it. And he come over with the contract or whatever. And he goes, so this is how we're going to play it? Like, some, he's like an old school, like, you know how, um, you wait till that passes. Does that pick that up? Does it pick it no, up? Not either? really. Oh, the so pills, fine. they own it, yeah. So, um, anyway, so I said, okay, I'll do it. So I'm, now, what? I'm not going to train, I can flicker, and she's just going to go flying. <laughs> <laughs> not going to train, like, you know, whatever. I'm like, I'm going to get in shape and be a good reason to do some videos or whatever. I probably got in the ring maybe three times. Those are the videos you see. On my Instagram, I never trained like that, you know? Right. Then she flakes out, what gets closer to it. My dude had to talk to her on the phone and everything. She was like, yeah, I think it'll be like a good opportunity. <laughs> I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> I'm like, oh my gosh. Okay, whatever. And so, um, a week, a week before the fight. She ends up literally leaving the country, like skipping out. We did the, we did the, um, the show what is what do you call it this has been so long ago the press conference yeah so where you're kind the, of face off and yeah, yeah uh-huh so we do the press conference and we literally are at the face off or whatever and you know damon set up a little like media coverage place or whatever and you know it was cool she was scared then i mean her knees buckled a little bit when we were standing next to each other man we were cracking up after that That's she true. got gone so she did it for the meet the publicity and blah 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 and it worked for her but five seven days before we are scheduled to go to atlantic city I get a call and, you know, my, one of the production guys, he's like, um, we can't find her. I don't like what you mean. You can't find her. They're like, oh, she, she like, she like said she's not doing it. Like we have a lawsuit. They sold tickets, hella tickets, like oh, blah, 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 damn. blah. You know, cause on my side, even too, this shit blew up. You know what I mean? I knew it would. Right. So I'll go, so what you going to do? Oh, well we got somebody else. I said, how you got somebody else? And you even asked me about it. Now I'm like, you motherfuckers trying to set me up. Who, who you think you already got? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So they get, what's her name? Natalie did not. Did, yeah, Nat D. I call her Nat D. So they get Nat D or whatever. And I'm thinking like, who is this? Bro? Like, who is she? They're all, oh, she has a background in boxing. Like, she'll be a good match. I said, are you kidding me right now? So you, you're trying to set me up. Right. I'm like, oh, I'm going to show you now. Oh, so you want me to get into a ring with somebody that actually trains, you know, whatever. And that now. <laughs> so you just want me to get knocked out. So you huh? trying to get. I yeah. said, okay. Okay. I called my trainer up and I said, he's in Detroit. Meet me in Atlantic City tomorrow. We're going early. And I don't care about no, however it's supposed to go, put up Mike Tyson. Show me Mike Tyson right now. I only want to see his knockout moves. And I did that. That was it. But I had cracked rib. Nobody knew that. I couldn't even swing my hip. Oh, yeah. I had a, got My rib was tore up. When I tell you it was like one of the most painful things. And it only had maybe three weeks to try to heal. I don't know if y'all ever had a rib injury. Oh, my God. Goodness, I'm talking about from breathing, moving, or whatever, and I'm a I'm a hook. Like my my strong suit is my hook or whatever. Yeah. So I couldn't even. Anyway, so I'm I'm doing these moves or whatever, and I just have to focus on my my straight, my stiff arm or whatever, and then just come with my t whatever. I love this shit. Anyway, so so we start training, doing that or whatever, and you know she comes out with her boxing videos. I'm like, oh yeah, yeah, okay. I'm gonna have to just knock this out, whatever. They're like, no, it's for charity. Like blah blah blah. I said, okay, well whatever. We'll just have to see. But then that ended up happening, and I won, and it was a good match. She's actually pretty tough until she started wrestling and trying to, like, 
Mm -hmm. grabbed me and I'm like you definitely don't want to do that because MMA is right up my sleeve motherfucker so I flipped her and just slammed her ass on the ground you know on, in the ring yeah it was great oh it was great I need to do another match actually I'll be defending the title soon I was yeah. thoroughly entertained when I watch it yeah you know normally in, you know a boxing match they kind of square try to figure each other out then they throw a few punches no we came we no. went ding, ding, ding. <laughs> we, we went right at it <laughs> but those those gloves were 23 ounces that's hella big, actually. Yeah, those were big gloves. I should have brought them for you guys or whatever, but like they're um, really, really big gloves. And you said the original gloves were bigger than that. Yeah, the and ones that he had. And the ones y'all had in that though, fight were big. They were humongous, but I was yeah. just like, damn, I'm not doing that old crazy ass balloon glove or whatever. It has to look at least be a little bit serious. Yeah, at least, yeah. So you have to be at least 22 or 23 ounces for the commissioner to not come and fine you and call it an exhibition entertainment match. You know what I'm saying? Uh, okay. So then you don't got no fines and stuff like that or whatever. Right. So that was the lowest we could go down. But yeah. So you gonna get back in the ring, huh? Oh hell yeah! Who you want to get in the ring with? I couldn't even tell you. I got guys DMing me like, can we can we box? Oh my Can we God. box? And I'm thinking like, are you mental? Uh, like for real? But yeah, you t put your hands behind your back. And let me knock you out. You can pay me, and I'll do that. Speaking of guys, I, I got a question. Can I can I say it way Sure can. Real quick. Now, I had a I had a I had a conversation with a girl this week. I was just wondering, you know, she's an attractive girl. I said, hey, because I've always wanted the guys. I always want. Did you say the guys need DM? How do your DMs work? <laughs> How do your DMs? Do you, I mean, I mean, because you wake up. I'm sure you got a thousand mm -hmm. unknowns. And how? What is the process of dealing with that? If you could give us an insight into an attractive woman's DMs, <laughs> because the way you just said it, yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, how do you deal with it? For one, well, is it overwhelming? Is it too much? You no, know, I mean I have people that help me with that because a lot of the, the the DMs or whatever you have to go through them. I don't. I have somebody that goes through them for business purposes, and if it looks real, you know, if it's like, they'll be like, oh, see, see I don't like bugs. Or bees especially or spiders do what you want some whiskey okay okay mm -mm. move i do not like bugs and all the stuff you do like you know like, i already uh, know it don't make no sense cool it don't make no what? sense i know it i don't and i know the thing about me bugs don't bother me but See? the other stuff does yeah well we all have our kryptonite I guess. yeah we do so but like sometimes or whatever um I mean, and really for me, just because I, I, I am verified or whatever, and a lot of my people are in the business, you see the blue check right away. Yeah. So exactly. that's what I'll go to first or whatever if I'm seeing it, just to make sure, like, you know, or whatever it is. But uh, I could make a calendar out of all the dick pics I get. We had a this. Calendar. A calendar. Oh, yeah, like a couple different ones for each month. Now, what? Let me ask y'all. Okay. Let me just ask you guys. What, in, your, in, in a male's mind, would you ever wake up and just want to send your ding dong to somebody that you thought would like what would you ever i mean what do you think goes through one's mind like oh let me just take a picture of this and send it you answer it you answer it then i'm answering you, you know I, I wish i had a good answer for it but i have no idea i just my mind can't function that way I, I, yeah. you know there's somebody i don't know and i, I just crazy. that gonna, is crazy right i mean all kinds black ones white ones <laughs> all right and what i found out that's not something i would do but i also found out over oh you know my life women don't like that so why yeah all i hear is women don't like it like pics being sent yeah Dick well pics. i i zoom in on some of them and like look at it and whatever i think it's <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I mean, sometimes it <laughs> so, some of them are like you're like what well, damn is it real or not or whatever but like sometimes i mean so there's some funky ones in there so you just sometimes you just look because you're just like really anyway <laughs> so I, you know, I don't mind i don't want people to see this and send me a million of them that's be too many to go through and <laughs> she's gonna go through them now i might <laughs> <laughs> oh, this girl is crazy. <laughs> yeah, it depends. Now I know, I know all the guys want me to ask you this question. Yeah. Like when when it comes to and you ain't gotta go too in depth with it. When it comes to dating, do you date regular quote unquote mm -hmm. regular guys? Mm -hmm. Well, can or we just guys in entertainment? You know. Oh, can or, we talk uh, about what do it? What does a date mean? Because I had mm -hmm. this conversation 
with somebody before. Okay. Because, you know, I have a lot of friends and uh, girls love dressing up just to go to dinner or just have a reason to get ready, right? You know, or whatever. Okay. If you say, Nikki, mm -hmm. let's, let's go to, let's, let's go have lunch. Is that considered a date to you? Dating? Mm -hmm. Like, tell me, like, tell me, because we got into it and I'm just like, Let's be clear because for me, I got to be careful anyway. I'm not about to go somewhere with you and then you go and tell 18 people, yeah, I just went on a date with Hoops. Like, I'm dating her. Right. What right, is the right, difference right, and right. what does that mean? You know what I'm saying? Right. Like, let's be clear really quick. So, what do you call that? Like, we just hung out? Like, that's what I feel like. We went and hung out. But what is a date? Since I haven't been on the date in so long since I'm married. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, you better be careful. I mean, one thing, like, I guess, it, if you go to lunch, I guess lunch. That, that's a. Lunch. I, that's lunch, okay. That's not a date. But when I did date, I tried to be original with my dates. I tried to do stuff that other guys wouldn't do. Right, but and when I you say you're going to go on a date, what is you what like you say, hey, let's go on a date? Or like, what is the concept? Well, <laughs> turn this yeah, over. As, as a single guy, I, I, I'm I'm kind of straightforward. So, hey, I, you know, I think you're cool. Let's go out sometime. That's what I say. Now, to call it and be specific, this is a date. I mean, you know what it is. I like you romantically. I think you're attractive. You think I'm attractive. Let's do some grown people shit. So let's just hang out. But I'm not going to say we're dating unless we have that conversation. If we haven't had that conversation, say we exclusive. Okay, cool. So dating is being exclusive. It has more than one definition for different people. See? Now, I'm going to say that. that right. It, if I'm dating you and I, and I really like you and I see potential in you, I'm going to be exclusive. I'm, I'm going to cut out everybody else. I really like her. I'm going to focus. I'm not giving her any... Does she know that, though? And do you know where she stands? You see, that's where... And I, I have to be okay with what up. she does, though. See that. You see what I'm saying? Now, if she come at me and says, well, I got other guys I'm dating as well, I it's on me. I have to make the decision to be cool with it. I'm not going to make her do anything. Yeah, so... What I think... Baby? I always thought a date was a date. Don't mean we in a relationship and nothing like that. Let's we're going out, out. We're hanging out. Yeah. We're having a good time. Yeah. We went on a date, and, and that's that. Yeah. That, that's the way I used to do it. Yeah. You know. So for me, I just make sure the lingo is, we're straight right. on the lingo. Right. We, we're right. not going to. You tell us your answer. But I mean, as far as dating guys, dealing with guys, or whatever, you know, like, do regular guys have a chance? <laughs> do they have a chance? Let's really. just cut it. Do they have a chance? <laughs> I wouldn't say that they don't have it. This is the thing. Like, I, <laughs> and y'all know my exes, you know who, you know, whatever. Right. And there have been several others I just haven't gone public with. So, but it's just like, right. if I worked my booty off to uh, drive this here car, get this nice house, however, whatever, right? I don't, I, like, I have seen it all and been there and all and, and then for me dating or relationship even now is so different than what it used to be and i don't got time for i mean you know right away if and if we're gonna just fuck let's just set call for what it is oh, you don't yeah. need to do around the whole yeah. be let's not beat around the bush or whatever yes we're grown but does that happen i'm very not i'm not open with people like that you know what i mean like it's exactly. hard for me i can't be it's easier for me to date in the business because we all recognize like what how you roll the position you play you know what i mean you could go out and you you know how we have to be because it could be paparazzi it could be media it could be this it could be that blah 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 and then sometimes i can't go somewhere because of that same reason and they could turn it and switch it and i got to deal with the world so you do have to be careful i personally like me i'm careful who i'm with where i go this and the other and so a lot of times also normal whatever you want to call it come around for different reasons you know i'm like hello I'm, i know i'm a catch uh hey. you know so do you want my 20 years like do i feel comfortable giving you 20 years of what i've built my reputation this day and the other for somebody to come and take a picture and say now who is this person now you get all that exposure this day and the other no fuck no like i have to really like you or fuck with you take you anywhere be out and be okay with that because the world's about to see you too my shit ain't normal you know what I mean? So for me, dating is very, I'm very picky. I'm very, um, but I'm not very open to, to dating right now. Like, con you know what I mean? Right, I'm just right. focused on if some, something happens or however, whatever, if you make a connection, maybe whatever happens, happens. But it's not like, like some women, and I, this is another reason I hate Instagram. It's like I open it up and you get all these girls that are, oh, I'm single because blah, 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 blah. But then you're dying to say you're not single. Like, it's all just so weird. People are crazy these days. I don't know. 
but I'm, I'm straight by myself right now. <laughs> it's been that way for a few years. I'm good. Oh, I got you. <laughs> yeah. Got the you. dating world is crazy now anyway. People think that Instagram is a dating app, I guess. I don't, hey, I'd like to take you out. And hey, I'd like to, you know what I mean? Like this isn't, for me, Instagram is work. So that's annoying when I get in there and people are like, uh, you think I could take you to dinner hoops? Like, really? Yeah. <laughs> now, 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 and, and they defense a little bit. That's yeah. probably the only way they can, you know, have any kind of communication with you. But that's crazy because, like, where I come from in an hour time frame of, like, business, you, if you were accessible, you were devalued. You were considered, mm. I can touch you. You see what I'm saying? So we had to change. Now, I that's true, too. Had to roll with this. There wasn't us or me. You couldn't even get a hold of me. You couldn't find me. Right. You know what I'm saying? And then, right. like... If you could, you know, the, the harder you were to get and the more valuable you were. That's true. Now, if you're not accessible and people can't get a hold of you, we'll move on to the next motherfucker that says yes. You, you, you see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Because there's 101 of everybody's now. Everybody's a model or an influencer or an entrepreneur, whatever you want to call it. Right. Which is fine. So, um, I kind of just go with the wind. And if I like somebody and think they're cute or whatever, because, I mean... They might have a chance to go on, like, you know, a hoop or do something or whatever, but it is very rare. Gotcha. Very rare. Do you still have your, your um, boutique? No. Had that for three years and didn't. That kept me in one place. I can't be yeah. in one place for too long. It's probably why I'm still single. <laughs> <laughs> I get bored very easy. Man, I ain't going to keep you too long. But musically, like, like who do you like listening to? Because I don't like to ask these because I just like to see what people listen to and... Um, I think I playlist. To, I think I listen to a little of everything. Country. I love country, uh -huh. obviously. Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then Nashville's right there, so I'm always at the CMA Awards. Nothing now. I mean, with COVID hitting, oh, my gosh. Uh, yeah. Which is cool out here because everything's so much more, like, spread out. Uh, yeah. You know, it's not – and people aren't right on top of each other, but – and we have drive-ins, and there's still stuff to do, but um, I like a little bit of everybody. I like Cardi. I like everybody. I listen to a big band. You don't wouldn't even believe the genre of music. I mean, it goes from the 50s to the 60s. Adam's like, yeah, he's a DJ. So, I mean, he's I'm all over the place with it. But I couldn't tell you a favorite. My mood, I, it changes too much. So, depends on my mood. But uh, thank you. Yeah. Thank, thank you for such a dope interview and inviting us out. And, and this has been nice and fun and different. Okay, well, I have a question for you. Oh, man. oh please, so please So in this ask. dating game, who, who would you see me with? Who am I dating? <laughs> who would I date? Who would be my ideal partner in your eyes? Oh, Lord. Celebrity-wise? Athlete-wise, who would it be? Wow. Oh, Athlete's too dumb. Um. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Athlete's too dumb, but they are. <laughs> what? Like, why? Who Not all I, of them. Who would I see you so date? Somebody. It's got to be somebody adventurous as hell. And that's kind of just out there. Hmm. You might edit some of this because it's going to take me a while to think of this. Let me win the lottery. <laughs> let me win the lottery. And that's, that's. Oh, what? Then we going to talk about it? Yeah, we gonna, oh, then oh, I can oh, talk about it. Oh, okay. I'm going to kick it like, see? <laughs> <laughs> so, how's about that date? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Oh, we can chill. Um, oh, my gosh. Let's see. I don't know. That's that's a that's a very good question. Man, different question. I, I'm almost jealous to answer. I almost don't want to answer. Like, <laughs> I'm gonna set this dude up. What I'm gonna get from him? Man, fuck that. Here. <laughs> that's hilarious. I can honestly say, I really don't know. No. I I, I don't know. Yes, I'm too extraordinary. I'm ordinary. <laughs> I mean, if you was just like a uh, titching hog and all that, I could easily throw names. But yeah, I don't know. I normally don't get stumped on questions. Normally, I have a good. But response. you see, though, you know. So, right. Yeah. If if Michael B. Jordan like black women. <sighs> right. Uh -oh. That's my boy though too. Was, but yeah. I, maybe say I ain't in it. <laughs> <laughs> he don't. <laughs> you know, I, for some reason, I was thinking in my head that maybe Michael B. Jordan. You know, he, he seems kind of laid back, but kind of venture. I don't know. I mean, he likes to act like he know how to buy. Oh Lord. You guys are ridiculous. <laughs> Okay, it'd just be Michael B. Jordan then. It'd I guess, be him. I guess it'd be him. Yeah. It'd be him. <laughs> Seemed like that'd work. <laughs> I just had to come up with something. <laughs> Seemed like that'd work. Well, anyway, thanks, you guys. Well, yeah, t tell everybody, you know, where they can find Jet on social media if they don't already follow you, you know, by now. <laughs> I'm not on there a lot. You can see, like, it's just like right. whenever I want to. I, I think, yeah. Yeah, that's true. But, 
So do you want me to just give a drop about it or whatever? or just However you want to do it. Talk to you and tell. You can look at the camera on this part. Oh, fine. okay. What's up, everybody? It's your girl, Nicole Hoops Alexander. And if you want to keep up with me, it's very easy. It's The Real Hoops on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, all of that. And once again, thank you. Thank you. Welcome. Now, Nicole Hoops <laughs> Alexander, you are a TakeOver TV superstar. Yeah. Oh, thanks. And there it is. <laughs> With my little clothes. Okay. What's up, everybody? This is your girl, Nicole Hoops Alexander, and you're watching TakeOver TV.